This is beautiful, quiet, peaceful, sedate, serene San Jose, California. But in just a few minutes, it won't be very quiet over there in the bowels of the San Jose Civic Auditorium because we're about to bring you the conclusion of Computer Bowl 5 as a team of smart guys from the West takes on a group of Sharpies from the East to see who knows more about computer trivia. We'll have Bill Gates, Pat Siebold, Jean-Louis Gasset, and a cast of computer celebrities as we bring you the finale of the fifth annual Computer Bowl on this special edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is brought to you in part by Intel, microprocessor technology for the software of today and tomorrow. Intel, the computer inside. Additional funding is provided by the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. And welcome back to Computer Bowl 5, presented by the Association for Computing Machinery. We're here at the San Jose Civic Auditorium. It's halftime, and after, let's see, two rounds of play, the score is 11 points for the West, four points for the East. You guys at the bottom, you've got a little bit of work to do. All right, for those of you at home just joining us right now, let me introduce our celebrity panelists on this Friday the 14th Horror Show. It's turning out that way for the East Coast at the moment, a night of terror for the team that loses. All right, let me introduce for the challengers. All right, on the bottom here, the terrifying techies of the East from Legion Corporation, John Bloodbath Burton. From Phoenix Technologies, Neil the Cannibal Colvin. Much more serious, these guys, right now. The captain of the East Coast team from PowerSoft Corporation, Mitchell the Maniac Kurtzman. From ViewLogic Systems, Alan the Hatchet Man, Hanover. And from the Patricia Siebold Group, Pat the Slasher Siebold. For the defending champions, those horrifying smart hackers of the West, from B Incorporated, Jean Louis Grusom Gasset. From Go Corporation, Jerry the Killer Kaplan. The captain of the West Coast team from Network General Corporation, Harry the Slicer Saul. From Super Mac Inc., Michael the Madman McConnell. And from DataQuest Incorporated, Lisa the Thrasher Thorell. Our judges, our judges this year are David Nelson representing the East Coast and John Schock representing the West Coast. Once again, our official examiner for tonight's Friday, the 14th competition, a man who puts fear into any competitor, Mr. Microsoft, Bill Gates. All right, we are into round three. The score, 11 for the West, four for the East, and we're going to begin this round with a prop. And this is the prop, and Bill, if you will ask the question. Nearly 30 years ago, one of the first precursors to today's pen-based computers was developed. It is a digital graphic input device with its own pen-like stylus. Where was this tablet developed? Was it? All right, we have an answer from Alan Hanover of the East Coast. MIT Lincoln Lab, no sound. MIT Lincoln Lab. You know you were better off with no sound because that's the wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> was it Xerox Park, IBM, Bell Labs, or the Rand Corporation? Okay, from the west we have Lisa Thorell. Rand Corporation. Rand Corporation is correct, Lisa. Okay. Another point for the West Coast. All right, we're going to a bonus round now, and this is another bonus round, the second shot for the West Coast to get a couple of extra points here. The subject is computer ads. I'm going to name an actor, and I want you to tell me what computer company he has served for as a spokesman. The actor is Alan Alda. What computer company? Alan Alda, answer through your captain, please. Right now, it's not hard. The company was IBM. IBM is one of the correct answers. Atari would have been another. He did both. All right, another point for the West. <laughs> the actor in the commercial is Bill Cosby. What's the computer company? The company was Texas Instrument. That's another point for the West. That's the correct answer. Here's a chance to roar ahead. The actor is William Shatner. What's the computer company? 
Yes? The company was Commodore. Commodore is right. Another point for the West. OK, at the end of that bonus round, the West with a commanding lead of 15 to 4, we're going to back to, back to toss up questions. And Bill, you're up. In 1983, the Heath Company marketed a robot kit. What was the name of? Neil Colvin of the East Coast. Hero. Hero is the correct answer. OK, there's a point for the East. The, the Geos operating system from GeoWorks was originally developed for what computer? What computer was the GIOS operating system first developed for? Again, not too tough a question, guys. All right, we have an answer from Harry Saul of the West. Uh, an answer. Radio Shack color computer. That is not the correct answer. Anybody from the East like to give it a shot? GIOS operating system developed for what computer? Going once, going twice. Yes, OK, Mitch. I couldn't hear the top answer. The Radio Shack 100? That is not the correct answer either. It was the Commodore 64. Gios written for the Commodore 64. Next toss-up question, Bill. One of the earliest personal computers was the Altair, manufactured by MITS. What did the letters M-I-T-S stand for? OK, Michael McConnell of the West. Micro Instrumentation Telemetry Systems. That's exactly right. Another point for the West Coast. OK, next question, Bill. What is the name of the computer program used by British mathematician Stephen Hawking for communicating with other people. What's the software program Stephen Hawking uses to communicate with other people? Going once, going twice. Come on, take a shot. Somebody got not too much to lose. I'm running out of time. OK, we have Alan Hanover. What's your shot, Alan? Mathematica. No. <laughs> Anybody from the West want to give it a shot quickly? Going once, going twice, no, OK. The answer is Equalizer. The name of the program is Equalizer. Next question, Bill. During the 1980s, there was a magazine that focused exclusively on Tandy TRS-80 computers. What was the name of that magazine? All right, we have a guest from Harry Saul of the West. Coco. No, that's not quite right. Anybody from East, uh, try, you finished the question, right? What was the name of the magazine that focused exclusively on TRS-80 computers in the early 1980s? Anybody like to try it? Going once, going twice, the answer is, sorry, time is up. 80 micro was the answer. All right, I've got a bonus round question now for the East Coast. Gentlemen, are you ready? And ladies, 16 to 5 is the score. This is a chance to get three points. The subject is software. All right, Sketchpad was the first computer-aided design, or CAD, program. It used a light pen for drawing images. Who wrote the program Sketchpad? I need an answer from the Captain Mitch. Ivan Sutherland. That's exactly right. One point for the East. We're up to 16 to 6. You can get another point if you can tell me who wrote the computer game Pinball Construction Set. Pinball Construction No, no, no. Hold on. You guys up there, just wait. This is for the East. Pinball construction set, Mitch? I need an answer. Uh, Trip Hawkins. No. <laughs> no, I'm afraid the answer is Bill Budge wrote the program. Bill Budge. All right, here's a chance for one more point. Who wrote the computer game Ghostbuster? The computer game Ghostbuster. Who wrote that program? East Coast. Talk about it. Think about it. Give me an answer, Mitch. Bill Gates. <laughs> no, David Crane was the answer to that question. You missed your chance. We're going back up to toss-up questions. Go ahead, Bill. Agnes, Paul, and Denise were the fanciful names of three custom chips inside a comp personal computer. All right, we have an answer from Jean-Louis Gasset. The Amiga. The Amiga is correct. Three chips that were inside the Commodore Amiga. 11 to 6, 17 to 6, I'm sorry, for the West Bill. In 1950, a computer designed by Edmund Berkeley made the cover of Scientific American magazine. The computer contained 130 relays and a five-hole paper tape input. What was the name of Berkeley's computer? Was it the SIDAC, the Ciliac, the Electro, or the Simon? The name of a computer, computer invented by Edmund Berkeley in 1950. It was on the cover of Scientific American, Alan Hanover of the East. Ciliac. That is not the correct answer. Anybody from the West like to take a shot? OK, who do we have up there from the West? I didn't see it go. Who's buzzing? I'm sorry, OK, go ahead, Jerry. The Electro. 
That is not right either. The answer was Simon. The answer was Simon. Edmund Berkeley's computer was called the Simon. Next question, Bill, 17 to 6 the West. Computer-related maladies such as carpal tunnel syndrome and bursa's shoulder are examples of RSDs. Are they are sometimes called RSIs? What do the letters? Mitch Kurtzman of the East Coast. Repetitive stress disorders. Ooh, judges, it is going to be your turn. Let's turn to John Schock and David Nelson and see if you'll accept that answer. We'll the answer was a repetitive stress disorder. We're begging help. Uh, we <laughs> no, these are tough guys. Uh, while there's a technical difference, uh, we feel that strain and stress are often regarded loosely as syn synonyms, and so we'd accept it. All right, the answer we had was repetitive strain disorder. You said repetitive stress. A strain is a stress. What the heck, give them the point. All right, let's go on to the next question. <laughs> 17 to 7. We, we know from strain and stress here on the East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Bill. The printer language PostScript uses Bezier curve calculations for its characters. TrueType uses slightly different, a slightly different type of curve calculation. What kind of curve calculation is used by TrueType? All right, a good techie question from Jerry Kaplan of the West. Spline approximation? I don't think so. I don't think that'll do it. Anybody from the East like to give it a shot? What are the types of curves used in the calculations for TrueType characters? <laughs> Nothing from the audience, please. <laughs> Anybody like to give it a shot going once, going twice? No, the answer is quadratic. Quadratic is the answer. All right. <laughs> 17 to 7, the West. Next toss-up question, Bill. The winner of the 1992 ACM Turing Award was Robert Milner. What language did he develop? Was it ICON, ML, FP, or LISP? What language did Robert Milner develop and we gave you four choices. Anybody like to take a shot? Uh, okay, Alan Hanover of the East. FP. FP is not the answer. Anybody from the West like to give it a shot? You got three left. Okay, Harry Saul. ML. ML is the correct answer. All right, so the score is we move into our next bonus round. 18 for the West, seven for the East. You guys on the West are ahead. In the West, it is your turn to actually make it even worse. The subject is programming and programmers. I'm going to give you right now the name of a programming language, and you tell me who wrote it, OK? Tiny Basic. Who wrote Tiny Basic? Lee Chen Wang. No, that is not the answer. The answer is Tom Pittman. Tom Pittman. All right, here's another chance for a point. Who invented fourth? Who invented the language fourth? What did we just lose? <laughs> Anyhow, do we get an answer? I, I need okay. an answer right now. No, it's too late. Charles Moore is the answer. All right, you have one more shot at getting a point here. What is the name of the C program used by Unix programmers to examine a program closely for style, language, usage, and portability problems? What is the name of the C program used by the Unix The name of the programmers? program is Lint. Lint is the right answer. All right, you got a point right there. All right, so at the end of that bonus round, the score 19 to 7, one round to go. Don't go away, we'll be right back. All right, here we are. This is the last round of the rubber match. The West in a commanding lead, 19 points for the West. Seven points for the East. You guys in the East, you can do it. Getting 12 points is not so hard. We've got lots of questions for you. First toss-up question, Bill. In describing video displays, the acronym RGB stands for red, green, blue. What does the acronym HSB stand for? HSB, what does that stand for? Harry Saul of the West? Hue, saturation, and brightness. That's exactly right. One point for the West. The Commodore VIC-20 was introduced in 1981. How many columns of text were displayed on the VIC-20 screen in the default mode? Was it 18, 22, 40, or 80? Jerry Kaplan of the West. 40. That is not the correct answer. All right, East Coast, you've got a chance to get a point here. How many columns displayed <laughs> on the VIC-20? 
We gave you four choices. Okay. Pat, what's the answer? 22. 22 is the right answer. Okay. A point for the East. All right. Next one, Bill. The first Cray-1 computer was installed in 1977. Where was it installed? Where was the first Cray-1 supercomputer installed? All right, Harry Saul's going to try it for the West. Uh, Livermore Radiation Lab. No, that is not the right answer. All right, East, you've got a chance to get a point here. The first Cray-1 supercomputer, 1977. Yes, Alan? Los Alamos Laboratory. That's the right answer, Los Alamos. All right, one point for the East. What do you call the feature appearing in early Macintosh drawing programs, such as Mac Paint and Super Paint, that lets you enlarge and modify a small portion of a drawing? Neil Colvin of the East? Zoom. No, that is not the answer. If you can finish the question, I guess, Bill. A small... Uh, you're entitled to hear the rest of the question no, if you want to wait. No, you've buzzed. All right, <laughs> Lisa, what's the answer? Magnify. No, 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 no. The answer was fat bits. Fat bits is the answer. All right, next question, Bill. In his 1950 article entitled Computer Machinery and Human Intelligence, Alan Turing poses a question about an artist as an example of the kind of question a computer can't answer. What artist did Turing refer to? Was it Picasso, Dolly, Da Vinci, or Michelangelo? Nobody read the article, huh? OK. Alan Hanover of the East? Michelangelo. No, it was not Michelangelo. From the West, anybody like to give it a shot? Harry Saul. Da Vinci. Da Vinci is not the answer either. It was Picasso. He said to the computer, what do you think of Picasso? And of course, the computer couldn't answer. All right, we're going to jump to a bonus round, Bill. And this is a bonus round for the East Coast. And the subject is going to be computers and the movies. Again, another chance for you people to get three points here. All right, here's the first question. In what 1977 movie did Julie Christie play the role of a woman who was imprisoned and then impregnated by a computer? Was it Basic Instincts, <laughs> Demon Seed, Love You to Death, or The Forbin Project? Demon Seed. Demon Seed is the right answer. That's one point for the East. OK, we're up to 20 to 10 right now. This 1985 movie was about two nerdy teenagers who use a computer to conjure up the woman of their dreams. What is the name of that movie? Yes, everybody's thinking about it. What was the name of that movie? The computer nerds used it to create this wonderful woman. The answer is, Mitch. Bill and Paul's Excellent Adventure. <laughs> you, <laughs> you're in the right genre. <laughs> Weird Science. The movie was called Weird Science. <laughs> Very weird. All right. Here's a chance for one more point. This 1984 film, directed by Steve Barron, told the story of a not-so-classic love triangle involving a boy, a girl, and a computer. What was the name of this movie? Was it The Electric Horseman, The Computer Wore Tennis Shoes, Electric Dreams, or The Last Starfighter? What was the name of that movie? 1984, Love Triangle, Boy, Girl, Computer. It was called Mitch. Last Starfighter? That is not right. It was Electric Dreams. All right, at the end of that bonus round, 20 points for the West, 10 points for the East. We are going back to toss-up questions, and Bill, it's your turn. In computer music terminology, a common acronym is ASDR. What do the letters ASDR stand for? ASDR, an acronym. We're dealing with computer music. What could it be? Anybody like to give it a try? Going once, going twice. All right, nobody's going to give it a try. The answer is attack, sustain, decay, release. All right, next question, Bill. If you wanted to expand the memory of the original IBM PC, how much memory could you fit onto the motherboard? How much memory could you put on the original IBM PC on the motherboard, Neil Colvin of the East? 64K. That's the right answer, 64K indeed. 
Okay, next question, Bill. Most microprocessors have an IRQ pin. What does IRQ stand for? Harry Saul of the West. Interrupt request. That's the right answer. Interrupt request. Next question. In the computer museums, people in computers exhibit, the first computer to ever light a Broadway show is displayed. The show was a chorus line. What was the computer? What computer was used to do the lighting for a chorus line? The first time a computer was used to do that. All right, Alan Hanover of the East. An Apple II. No, it was not an Apple II. Anybody from the West like to give it a shot? Computer used to do the lighting for a chorus line. Yes, go ahead, Jerry. How about a PDP-11? Close, but no cigar. PDP-8 is the answer. PDP-8 was the answer. All right, 21 to 11, the West. Bill, go ahead. In 1976, the first Z80-based computer was introduced. What com company introduced it? Was it Processor Technology? Neil Colvin of the East? Crememco. Crememco is the right answer. Okay, another point for the East. Another toss-up question. What was the first real-time computer? All right, we have Jean-Louis Gasset. Whirlwind. That's the right answer. Okay, another point. Very good. Okay, I'm going to do a bonus round right now. It is the West Coast's turn, I'm afraid, for the bonus round. So here's a chance. The subject is microprocessors. West, according to the 1993 Guinness Book of World Records, what is the fastest microprocessor in the world? According to the Guinness Book of Records, this year's edition, what is the fastest microprocessor in the world? Yes, Harry? According to us, it's the DEC Alpha. That's the right answer also, DEC Alpha chip. Very good. Okay, for a second point in this bonus round, what is a unit of real estate on a VLSI chip called? A unit of real estate on a VLSI chip. Yes, I need an answer, please. Square mill. Square mill is an acceptable answer, yes. Or nano acre would have been an answer also. Okay, one more point. We've got one more chance for you guys to get another point. What microprocessor was used inside the Cosmac Elf computer? <laughs> the Cosmac Elf computer. What was the microprocessor inside it? I need an answer quickly. Harry. The uh, RCA 1801. Say it again. The RCA 1801. Uh, what do you say, judges? I don't think so. Comment. If if only because you're terminology, those are, uh, if, if only because you're blowing them out so badly, Harry. I think we ought not to allow it. The an the answer is the RCA 1802. <laughs> what a difference one can make! Huh? All right, we're going back to the toss-up questions, Bill. MIT is famous for its Media Lab, where they work on innov innovative uses of computer technology. The Media Lab is the successor to another group at MIT called ArcMac. What did ArcMac stand for? This was a group at MIT, the predecessor to the Media Lab at MIT. They called themselves ArcMac, and ArcMac stood for what? Going once, going twice. All right, we'll give Alan Hanover a shot. Architecture machine. That's the right answer. Well. Architecture Machine Group, I think we'll give them the right answer on that one, sure. Next one, Bill. Football games on TV have often had ads for cars, beer, and even occasionally computers. Jean-Louis Gasset <laughs> is digging himself a real deep hole. What's the answer? 1984 Super Bowl. Wrong. <laughs> Finish. Finish the question, Bill, for the East Coast. But during the 1993 Fiesta Bowl, <laughs> <laughs> one sponsor was an operating system. What was the computer operating system that was advertised in the Fiesta Bowl? How many choices could there be? Pat Seabold of the East. OS2. OS2 is the right answer. All right, one more question, Bill. Go ahead. LIPS is an acronym for a measure of computer performance. Jerry Kaplan of the West. Logical inferences per second. That's the right answer for the West. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 
our time is up. This is the end of round four, the end of the game, the end of Computer Bowl five, the end of the East Coast. The, the score is 25 for the West, 14 for the East. The new champions, the continuing champions, the winners of the rubber match, the West Coast by a score of 25 to 14. Congratulations to all of our panelists and thank you all for joining us for this fifth annual Computer Bowl. A special thank you to the Computer Museum, ACM, and all the sponsors and underwriters who made this event possible. Now, for all of you watching this at home, that's it for Computer Bowl 5 and for this week's special edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is brought to you in part by Intel, microprocessor technology for the software of today and tomorrow. Intel, the computer inside. Additional funding is provided by the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Video cassette copies of this program are available. Computer Chronicles also publishes a companion newsletter containing details on products demonstrated and information on program topics. To order a video cassette or a newsletter, call 1-800-799-4949 or write Computer Chronicles. Please specify program subject for tapes. All orders include a free software program for auditing software use and information on the definitive guide to keeping your organization's software legal.